evening. Welcome to BCN News. Leading our news tonight, Opposition MP Honorable Terry Coe's application for an injunction on the government to stop the building of the new parliament building has been dismissed. This was the ruling by the Chief Justice C.J. Coxhead on 7th August. The court ruled that due to lack of jurisdiction to grant an injunction against the Crown, the application was dismissed. The court stipulated the generally accepted position of any court, including the Newe High Court, is that an injunction will not be issued against the Crown. There are alternatives to this action, and that is to seek a declaratory order against the Crown on the basis that if, if they are successful with obtaining declaratory orders, the Crown will abide by those orders. However, Mr. Coe did not seek a declaratory order. C.J. Coxhead highlighted the ambiguity of the Assembly Members Act 2006, saying that the law is unclear and the court has asked that the government can assist by proposing amendments to Section 6 of the Act so that it is clear. This was part of the judgment handed down by the Land Court on the 7th August in regards to an application by Mr. Terry Coe to stop the work on the new Parliament building. The Chief Justice Coxhead, in summarizing his decision, asked the government to propose amendments to this law so as to be clear on its intention. A woman swept away by strong waves during rough seas over the weekend is lucky to be alive, having been rescued by three brave visitors. The woman in the fall suffered a broken leg and was carried to near ground. The woman was medevaced yesterday afternoon. The lady, believed to be visiting friends and families on the island, was at the Limu Pools when she put herself in a precarious position exposed to incoming waves, one of which swept her out. The three men were on good timing, hearing her cries for help. Onlookers assisted, trying to contact the hospital for help, but with problems occurring simultaneously with damaged cables at the Sekana Tower, all phone lines, including the emergency one, was inoperable. Onlookers raced to the nearby Hio Cafe to try to call for help. Before the ambulance arrived, which was also said to be delayed, all were worried for the state of the woman, noting her age, panic and concerns for her own well-being. The first occurred at the same morning at Sir Robert's Wharf with a female tourist who was rescued by locals. However, she did not su sustain injuries and did not seek medical help. The public, especially visitors, are strongly advised to take heed of the weather warnings and not to underestimate newest strong currents. And just on the last story, where phone lines and internet remain down severely affecting the northern side of the island over the weekend, it is understood... No one could be reached using handheld devices, including reaching the emergency 999. This is because of uh, telecom cables were accidentally cut at the Sikana Tower late Friday afternoon. The Manitou contractors dug the builder, accidentally cut through the cables, having been misinformed of the true and accurate cable locations. Many continue to be affected, including those that desperately required the service last Saturday when the woman rescued needed emergency help. Only four Indonesian workers remain working on the island from the initial eight who were brought to Niue to help aid the labor shortage. All are male workers residing at the Noni farm in Vaya, their place of employment. The Indonesian workers upon first arrival to the island were quick to help with roading maintenance. For months now, such work has already ceased with the labor shortage at the Niue Nonu farm, settled with all four engaged there with full-time employment. This is according to the manager Mesepa Talani Seu. The workers were contracted by government with help from business owner Avi Rubin. This, however, isn't the first time foreign workers have been sought to aid the labor shortage here in Niue. Previous workers from the Philippines were brought in to help in the agricultural sector, such as those employed by Stan Kalauni in vanilla farming. With demand for such products as Nonu and vanilla growing globally with quality recognition, the problem collectively surrounding the labor mobility in the private sector is increasing. Preference from local new ends is evident for the government sector, with a four working days per week a major factor. Works have commenced for the new Met Office Tide Gauge Station down at Sir Robert's Wharf, with three technicians put to work over the weekend, having arrived on Friday's flight, one from Australia's Bureau of Metrology and two from the Secretariat of the Pacific Community. The trio has timed their trip for the arrival of the mast on last week's boat planned to be installed before they leave this Friday. The tide gauge, he said, hasn't been working for some six months, but that the station itself was damaged by the cyclone that had passed nowhere in 2017. The trio commenced repair of the two cables heavily exposed due to the wave action down at the wharf, this time reinforced to withstand, hopefully, the power of the waves. 
Other types of data derived from the station include water temperatures, the rate of sea level rise, and video footage. Nonu added to Niue's vanilla and honey sector is another success story in Niue. Officials from the Nonu Farm, Mesepa Taleni Seu, reveals the Nonu Farm is 100% self-funding and self-sufficient. All expenditures, including wages of those employed, including all four Indonesian workers reported on earlier, are all being paid by the Nonu Farm, she says. Exports have grown since the Nonu Farm commenced. The main markets, she says, for new Nonu products are New Zealand and China. And finally, the village of Tamako Tonga was a site of green, the trademark color of the village, as it hosted its show day last Saturday. The village didn't just celebrate the annual show day, but Reverend and President of the Ekalesia Niue Church, Vili Vivian, acknowledged and blessed the village for their 136th birthday. Dignitaries, including the New Zealand High Commissioner, His Excellency Kirk Yates, were in attendance. Beautifully crafted hand-woven items and fresh produce adorned the grounds, prepped well for inspections before their prize giving. Festivities followed the official opening with traditional activities and dancing. Many turned up to enjoy, including tourists and UN families traveling, especially to join in. And that's BCN News for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night.